Now, Arkansas's most watched sports show, Hooten's Arkansas Football. Hello and welcome to Hooten's Arkansas Football tonight from the Marketplace Grill, a favorite place for football fans to eat before or after the games in the fall. On Fridays and Saturdays, you can find the Hooten's Arkansas Football TV camera crews at a lot of the Marketplace Grill, uh, grill locations across the state. We'll tell you more about the Marketplace coming up in a few minutes. First though, we've got high school football highlights. Class 5A, we will begin tonight with highlights from the eighth week of the high school season. And our Class 5A highlights are brought to you by My Bank, First Security Bank Corps. And we begin our Class 5A Halloween weekend highlights with the Battle of the Devils, the West Memphis Blue Devils and the Jacksonville Red Devils. Midway through the first quarter, West Memphis on a fourth down, and it's Marquette Williams getting loose, not only for the first down, but a 37-yard score. West Memphis was up 7-0 early in the second quarter now. Again, fourth down, this time fourth and six. West Memphis back to Williams, and he's headed back to the end zone, 32 yards. That's all the Blue Devils would need if they held Jacksonville to a kick return only. Final score, West Memphis 14, Jacksonville 6. The Cersei Lions coming off their first win of the season last week, looking to upset conference leader Sylvan Hills. But Sylvan Hills built a 15 to nothing lead in the second quarter. And then Ulysses Robinson makes the interception. He brings it all the way back to the 15 for Sylvan Hills. And just a few seconds before the half, Hezekiah Smith with the touchdown. Sylvan Hills is up 22 to nothing at the break. But Cersei would not quit. Watch sophomore quarterback Justin Round. Great play to get off the pass. Matt Crampton is going to pull it in. 32 yards for the touchdown, but it wasn't enough. Final score, Sylvan Hills 29, Cersei 6. At Springdale, the number one Bulldogs playing host to Fort Smith Northside. Springdale undefeated. Northside lost its first game a week ago to Fayetteville and ran into a buzzsaw in the Bulldogs. Springdale's Aaron Davis with the 29-yard grab. That would set up the one-yard run by Mitch Mustaine on the quarterback sneak. Springdale was up 7-0. A little bit later, Springdale would drop 82 yards. Drake Taylor from nine yards out. He made it 14-3. Springdale would not imply the mercy rule, but would win its ninth straight. Final score, Springdale 35, Northside 17. Now to Central Arkansas. Little Rock Central still battling for a top playoff seed, playing host to McClellan on Friday night. Sonic Super Team quarterback Clark Irwin, nice run for the Tigers. That's a first down, and a few plays later, Irwin gives to Mickey Dean, and Dean goes 33 yards to pay dirt. Central was up 7-0. The Tigers would rack up more than 500 yards offense against McClellan, but the Tiger D is susceptible to the pass. McClellan quarterback Ed Roberts hooks up with Kevin Nichols. He breaks some tackles. 67-yard pickup for McClellan. A few plays later, Roberts will keep, and this game was close. Central only led 21 to 14 at halftime before pulling away in the second half. Final score, Central 49, McClellan 14. There were two games played on Thursday night, including Little Rock Hall and Catholic at War Memorial. Catholic looking to make the playoffs for the first time since 1995. The Rockets with a rock-solid defense and outstanding kicking game. Walter Lusk kicked two field goals for a 60-0 halftime lead, including this 45-yarder. A little bit later, kicking into the wind. Watch this. Lusk will come up just short on this 50-yarder. It hit the bottom of the crossbar. Next week, Catholic goes for at least a share of its first conference title since 1987. Final score, Catholic 18, Hall 0. North Little Rock put the mercy rule on Parkview Thursday night. North Little Rock quarterback Josh Dixon rushed for 118 yards, and junior tailback Van Steuben got 107 yards and a couple of touchdowns, and the Charging Wildcats are headed to the playoffs for the first time in four years. Final score, North Little Rock 35, Parkview 0. On Friday night, Bryant playing host to Conway. Hooten's had Bryant as a conservative 14-point favorite, and it only took one quarter for Bryant to cover the spread. Quarterback Anthony Mask, he hits Blake Zuber for the short touchdown. Bryant was up 7-0. Just moments later, Mask back at work. He finds Dustin Holland for a nifty first down, tiptoeing on the sideline. A few plays later, Bryant pulling it into the end zone. 270-pound David Hollis for the score. Bryant was up 21 to nothing in the first quarter, and the Hornets go on to invoke the mercy rule. A Bryant victory next Thursday over North Little Rock would give the Hornets home field advantage throughout the playoffs, and they would be on the opposite side of the bracket from Springdale. Final score, Bryant 35, Conway 0.
There are no changes in Hooton's Arkansas Football Class 5A Top 10, brought to you by the Arkansas Army National Guard. Springdale will be at home in the first two rounds of the playoffs, but must travel in the semifinals. The Bulldogs are followed by Central, West Memphis, Bryant, and Northside. Fayetteville stays at number six with that big win at Southside on Friday night. Cabot won its second overtime game of the year, beating Jonesboro 17 to 10 Friday night. Sylvan Hills is number eight, followed by Catholic, North Little Rock. Texarkana starts the second 10, then it's Russellville up to number 12, and Benton up to number 13. There's Southside dropping down to 14, and El Dorado at 15. Mountain Home looks like it could make the playoffs from the east. The Bombers are followed by Lake Hamilton, Jonesboro, Fairview, and Pine Bluff. Van Buren won at Rogers by seven points Friday night. The Mounties are followed by Jacksonville, Conway, and Bentonville. Now the ConocoPhillips Spirit Student of the Week. Searcy High sophomore Haley Hempstead always dreamed of getting her paws on the Lions mascot job. When I was in about sixth or seventh grade, just from always watching the mascot, it was my favorite part of the game. And I just knew I wanted to do that. I wanted to lead the crowd. It's all a lot of fun. I get to just be with the crowd and I like to pretend like I'm the ruler of them all. Just get to have them all join in and make the football players do their best. Haley does her best in the classroom, maintaining a 3.8 grade point average. I try to prioritize and be very self-restricting. I try to get myself to study first and then have fun. I thank my mom and dad for always supporting me. And my mom's been at every game and my dad's been here in spirit with me at every game. He's in Iraq right now. If I'm the mascot again next year, he'll be here to cheer me on. Nominations for the ConocoPhillips Spirit Student of the Week are welcomed and can be made by logging on to Hootons.com or by stopping in ConocoPhillips Stations of Arkansas. And congratulations again to Haley Hempstead from Searcy, our ConocoPhillips 66 Spirit Student of the Week. Coming up next, more of Hootons Arkansas football. We've got Class 4A highlights coming up. Number one, Alma. We have highlights of their big game. Number two, Pulaski Robinson. Number three, Greenwood. Highlights of the best teams and the biggest games from the eighth week in Class 4A are coming up next. Tonight for the Marketplace Grill, it's Hooton's Arkansas Football. Brought to you by Sonic. How many times have we taken out a number one last year? Hey, we're good at this, aren't we? Yes, sir. We're going to go out there, guys. We're playing our Valonia Eagle football, aren't we? Yes, sir. There's two things I ask. What is it? Out hit, out hustle. Out hit, out hustle. Guys, this terrible. I'm on. Let's get after them. You hear me? Yes, sir. sir. When we leave here today, they're going to have respect for Valonia. Bologna coach Jim Stanley and the number eight ranked Eagles at Alma, the number one team in the state in the rugged 4A West. Both teams' defenses were biting early. The Eagles go to the air on the first position, but Alma's Colby Hathaway gets the pick. Bologna would commit four turnovers on the night. Bologna returns the favor. Senior stud Nick Cowger steps in front of this toss in the first quarter. The defenses would dominate all night. Bologna's only points of the night come with senior fullback Cal Salmon. He finds a seam up the middle. The Eagles are thinking upset at Alma, but the Airedales would storm back on their next position. They spread the field. Junior quarterback Joseph Materials goes to work. Adam Hobbs meets Josh McIntyre. Big hit by McIntyre. Hobbs somehow holds on, and Alma's on the move. Now in the second quarter, the same drive, the Airedales back to the eye, and senior Jeremy Gregory won't be denied. Seven yards for the Alma touchdown, and the top-ranked Airedales would score again in the fourth quarter to win this one. Final score, number one, Alma 15, Bologna 8. Second-ranked Pulaski Robinson was trying to sew up a top playoff seed in the Southwest Friday night at Little Rock Fair. Senators were up 22-8 in the second quarter, but Fair would keep it close. Avery Williams squirting around the end for a first down, and a few plays later, Brennan Metcalf gets a short touchdown that cut it to 22-14. To Robinson would manage to hold on, winning its closest conference game of the year, though. Final score, Robinson 30, Fair 22. Full moon at Mills Friday night. The Comets trying to crash Pulaski Oak Grove and Darren McFadden. First possession of the game. McFadden doing what he does best. Outrunning everybody 70 yards to the end zone. Oak Grove was up 6 to nothing. But Mills would answer with an interception return for a touchdown. They were up 7 to 6. A little bit later, McFadden would show he could play some defense. Derek McDonald's pass to Eric Elmore and the big hit by McFadden. But Elmore holds on to it. And that would set up a 19 yard Oliver Sobic field goal. And Mills upsets Oak Grove. Final score Comet 17, Oak Grove 14. 
And we wrap up our exclusive 4A coverage with a fantastic finish at Greenwood, where the Bulldogs and Siloam Springs got into the game of the week. Siloam Springs may be the turnaround story in the state this year. The Panthers were up 13 to seven in the fourth quarter at Greenwood, and Siloam was starting to believe. Greenwood was worried. Siloam was in control of the game and at the 23 and looking for more. But the Bulldogs pressure quarterback Chase Pittman, he tosses the shuttle pass, and Greenwood's Justin Fuchs takes it the other way. Nobody is going to catch the senior linebacker. Fuchs is gone. 77 yards for the go-ahead touchdown. That gave Greenwood a 14-3 lead, but Silo would come back with an 11-play final drive. Pittman hits Brandon Thurman on the slant for good yardage, and with 22 seconds left, Siloam Springs junior kicker Park Dinger needs to hit his third field goal of the night. This one from 40 yards. But it hooks just left. And Greenwood stays unbeaten in the 4A West. The Bulldogs take on bitter rival Alma next week for the conference championship. Final score from Hooton's Arkansas Football Class 4A Game of the Week. Greenwood 14, Siloam Springs 13. I mean, I was right there. I was right at the place at the right time. And he just pitched it right to me. Took off, hoping no one would catch me. So I don't think it was quite five minutes till somebody started yelling Alma in my ear, so it won't be long. Evidently, that's a pretty good rivalry. <laughs> the Alma Airedales are 9-0 after holding off Bologna by six points on Friday night. Robinson also 9-0. The Senators are the 4A Southwest champs for the second straight year. Greenwood, they're headed to Alma next week for the 4A West title. The Wind Yellow Jackets are the top seed from the East and will play host to Bologna in the first round. The Batesville Pioneers are number five. They will play host to Silo Springs in the first round of the playoffs. The Panthers are followed by Bologna, Monticello at number eight. The Billies play at Oak Grove next week with the 4A Southeast title on the line. Stuttgart starts the second 10, followed by Hope and West Helena. The Cougars play at Stuttgart next, and the winner will probably advance to the second round of the playoffs. The Whitehall Bulldogs, hard luck for Whitehall. They lost two conference games by one point each, and Whitehall will miss the playoffs. Number 16, Marion needs only to beat Blytheville next week to get into the postseason. There's Fair and Harrison. Hot Springs Lakeside is still alive for a playoff chance if they can beat Hope in Week 10. The Mills Comets move up to number 21 after that big upset of Oak Grove. Then it's Paragould. The Rams will be in the playoffs if they can beat Green County Tech next. The Eagles are ranked number 24, and Magnolia rounds out the top 25. The Panthers still have a chance at the postseason. Coming up next, more of Hooton's Arkansas football class. 3A highlights are straight ahead. So everybody, we are the state champs. You better respect us, or we'll teach you a lesson too. What are you talking about? Perfection. We're going to catch them all, we're going to block them all, we're going to tackle them all. We're going to do everything we can do to not just win, but win by a big margin to show everybody we are the state champs. You better respect us, or we'll teach you a lesson too. And I can get that out of you, can I not? Yes, sir! Pulaski Academy coach Kevin Kelly with a big ring and some big talk before the Bruins' big game against Central Arkansas Christian. The defending six AAA champion Mustangs would fumble on the second play of the game, and that would set up PA early. Sophomore quarterback Stephen Lux, he hits Mark Davin for his first touchdown of the year. Davin put the Bruins up 7-0, that would be huge. But CAC would come right back. Watch Jesse Gates, he's a smooth operator, finds Trent Morgan in the flat. Big game for CAC, and that would set up this touchdown run by Trent Morgan. He gets into the end zone, and that cut PA's lead to 7-6, to six, but that's as close as the Mustangs would get. PA tackling a pair of touchdowns in the first quarter, including Bailey Pison's two-yard run. That put the Bruins up 14-6, to six, and PA is the sixth AAA champion this year and will have home field advantage in the playoffs. Final score, Pulaski Academy 34, CAC 26. The Fordyce Redbugs were the only team to beat Star City in AAA Conference play last season. Friday night, Fordyce needed just one good series to win the rematch. The Redbugs put together a nice drive. Tim Spears sparking it, fumbled at the end, but Fordyce retained possession. And a few plays later, Harvey Jimerson scores from three yards out, and Fordyce beats Star City for the second straight season. Final score, Redbugs 7, Star City 0. 
from Fordyce to Farmington now with Hooters Arkansas football. The Cardinals play and host a big bad Boonville. And here come the Bearcats. Tobler Turner taking the handoff. He's got the rock and he's going to roll 34 yards. Boonville was up on Farmington 7 0. A little bit later in the second quarter now, the Bearcats quarterback, Derek Davis, he's going to keep it himself 26 yards. That made it 21 0 at halftime. And Boonville rolls over Farmington. Final score Bearcats 36, Farmington zip. At Elkins, the Elks playing host of the Westport Tigers and Elkins in the first quarter getting it done. Ryan Fink is Zachary White hooking up 56 yard touchdown. Elkins was up six to nothing. A little bit later, still in the first quarter though, Elkins is Josh Finkus, 11 yard touchdown run. That made it 12 to nothing Elks. And this one got away from West Fork early. Finkus would hit Jason Duvall for a 25 yard touchdown early in the second quarter and the Elks roll. Final score, Elkins 39, West Fork six. Boonville is the new number one team in Class 3A. The Bearcats are 9-0 and the top seed from the Ford AAA Conference. Pulaski Academy moves up to number two. This year's Bruin team has accomplished the only thing that last year's couldn't do, and that was beat Central Arkansas Christian. CAC falls to number three, but the Mustangs could still ride Jesse Gates to the state championship. The Mustangs are followed by the Scrappers and the Red Devils. Ashdown starts the second five, followed by Dollar Wave, which will be the top seed from the eight AAA. Warren will be the number two seed from that conference. The Lumberjacks' only losses this year have been at Pulaski Academy and Dollar Way. Rivercrest beat Harrisburg 14-7 on Friday night, and that should mean another conference championship for Rivercrest. Ozark starts the second 10, followed by 9-0 Green Forest. The Tigers are the number one seed from the 1 AAA. Fountain Lake will play Nashville for the 7 AAA Conference Championship next week. Pocahontas beat Newport Friday night, but the Redskins still need to beat Heber Springs next week for their second straight 2 AAA title. There's Shiloh Christian, followed by Lone Oak and Dardanelle. The Sand Lizards are in the playoffs for the second straight season. Then it's Hoxie, Osceola, and Dover. The Pirates will play Atkins for a share of the 5 AAA title next week. Newport drops to number 21, followed by Mariana, Mina, Fordyce, and Star City. The Bulldogs slip to number 25 and are headed to Pulaski Academy or CAC in the first round of the playoffs. Now, the United States Marines Scholar Athlete of the Week. Tad Turner is the big man on the Mayflower campus. Before he even thinks about playing for the Eagles on Friday night, this honor roll student is focused in the classroom. Uh, my parents have always told me I had to excel in the classroom before I excel on the field, so I've stuck with that. And it's, hopefully it'll lead me to further and better things. He's smart, got a, good, got a good head on him, got a good football skills, and hey, he's just good for the wing team. I, I love it. It's, it's, it's my thing. I like doing it. Uh, coach, he likes to keep them guessing. It has me guessing sometimes. Congratulations to Tad Turner, the Marine Scholar Athlete of the Week. And congratulations again to Tad Turner from Mayflower, our Marine Scholar Athlete of the Week. Coming up next, more of Hooton's Arkansas football tonight from the Marketplace Grill. Our Class 2A highlights are next. Now, more of Hooton's Arkansas football, brought to you by State Farm. Boys, I've had a great feeling all week. The monkey is off your back. We got beat last week. We can win a share of conference championship tonight. And if Greenland takes care of business up the road, we're going to turn out to be number one. Let's take care of our part right here. Let's get a share right here. Mountain Bird coach Tom Harrell and his Dragons trying to slow down the Charleston Tigers. Charleston coming into the game ranked number two in the state and immediately go to work. Senior tailback Blake Bates gets loose down the far sideline. Big gain into Mountain Bird territory. But moments later, Charleston fumbles the snap and sophomore Clifton Goins comes up with them all for Mountain Bird. The Dragons at their own three yard line that go to their senior quarterback Dylan Carr. This guy's a good one. He gets the Dragons out of the hole with a nice run and Charleston would eventually stop Mountain Bird. The Dragons had to punt and Charleston's second drive went 99 yards. Senior Drew Hill would cap it with this touchdown run. Hill had 95 yards on the night and scored two touchdowns as Charleston extends its one double A winning streak to 40 five straight games. Final score, Charleston 28, Mountain Bird 0. 
staying in the 1AA up in Greenland. First quarter action, Pirates playing host to Lavaca, and Casey Champion runs up the middle for the touchdown. That puts Lavaca's golden arrows up 12 to nothing on Greenland. A little bit later in the second, Lavaca on the Greenland 19 this time, and Jeff Powers, he's chased out of the pocket, but finds Kevin Ray open downfield, and that would set up a touchdown. Powers hands off to Casey Champion. Lavaca was up 21 to nothing, and the Golden Arrows go on to win it. Final score, Lavaca 28, Greenland 14. Arkansas Baptist undefeated in conference play, looking to stay that way against Little Rock Lutheran. Paul Bucari, 15-yard touchdown. A little bit later, Baptist goes to the air, but Lutheran's Mark Carroll makes a diving interception. Lutheran trying to stay with the Baptist early, but Baptist's quarterback, Red Hatcher, would make up for the mistake. Scrambling out of the pocket, he's going to go all the way around and score. Final score, Baptist 41, Lutheran 10. Putin's Arkansas Football Class 2A rankings brought to you by the Arkansas Army National Guard. Ryzen stays on top and will likely be at home throughout the state semifinals. There's Charleston at number two, followed by Palestine Wheatley. Harding Academy's number four. The Wildcats beat up Barton and are one of the favorites to meet Ryzen in Little Rock. East Point said County's number five, then it's Lavaca and Derricks. The Outlaws won the 7AA West and should play host to Harding Academy in the second round. There's Junction City, Hughes, and Mountainburg. Greenland starts the second 10. The Pirates could not keep up with Lavaca Friday night. Then it's Bearden and Barton. Arkansas Baptist, the top seed from the 4AA, likely playing host to Greenland in the first round. Jesseville is tied with Ola and Mount Ida for the top spot in the 5AA. Number 16 is Ola. Bubba Noakes led the Mustangs to another come from behind victory, this time 27 to 26 over Mount Ida. Perryville got an important win over Hector Friday night, 20 to 14. Mount Ida is number 19, followed by Hector and Falk jumping up 12 spots after shutting out Foreman, 25 to nothing. Falk is followed by Hazen, Foreman, Spring Hill, and the Go Devils rounding out the top 25.